Yo, hey, we got a voicemail from one of our guys, Big O. He said, on paper, the Chicago Bulls have a top five roster in the Eastern Conference. We going to break it all down. But you already know, you got to hear the music first. Come on, yeah. Gang. Shy Boys Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm with my dog, C-Dub. How you doing, boy? What's the word? I heard we got a voicemail, nephew. What's the word, though? We do got a voicemail, but hey, hey, before we get into it, if you like what you listen to today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. We on the road to 4K, baby. Now we're going to go ahead. Before we break down the topic, I got to let my man's big O. Give his thoughts on this whole you dig. <laughs> Big so, Oski. We're going to play the voicemail, then we're going to get right to it. It's real quick. Here's the voicemail. What's going on? Cognac boys. Speak up. It's Bobby. Big old man. Y'all know I got to call you again, man, dog. That was a uh, good topic. Uh, he has to see and got the fourth rank eight. I say that's fair. I say that's fair. You know what I mean? Uh, on paper? On paper? The Bulls should be top four. I mean, like, top four, one of the top, one of the best four, probably, rosters. Okay, I, I still it the five. One of the top five best on paper rosters in the East. But because of all the media, the Bulls, the Bulls have us smoking on. <laughs> all the media they've been giving us. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people ain't really as high on them as the name would tell you. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I said there's a piece of y'all, you know, in other shows I call in on. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nick Oaks, Dakota Hoops have been two all star caliber players. We shouldn't win nothing less than 26 games with them three. I don't care who the rest of the team is. But to be a great team, to be a contender, we we also know that the rest of the rounds have to shake out pretty damn good to make those three even best. So, I mean, even with Javon Carter, even with Tory Craig, not flashy name, I love what those guys bring. I love what those guys have done for, uh, over their careers. But they're still not one of those names that's going to have people say, oh, yeah, the boys going to be top four now, you know what I mean? We got to see the improvement from Patrick Williams, Kobe White, and we have to see better coaching and cohesion from, you know, the team overall for us to get that praise in the media. So I say it's fair, but I do expect them to be top six. I agree with both of y'all. They, they, they damn sure better be a top six team. Well, it's a failure. If you're in the play in to me, it's a failure. I don't care how you play. You know what I mean? Um, these guys in Philly Donovan, all of them, everybody, they need to bring it this year. This is a pivotal year. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got paid. Except Patrick Williams and Tomorrow. But everybody else got paid. Now let's see, you know, what y'all going to bring to this point. What y'all going to do for the city. So that's all I got, fellas. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. I'm, I'm pulling in there for the show. All right. So there you have it. Big O gave his thoughts. Said on paper, the Chicago Bulls are a top five team on paper. On paper, ladies and gentlemen. On paper. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> They're a top five team in the Eastern Conference. C dub, go ahead and take your shot at this one. Hey, shout out to Big O, man, because he uh he he right on the line with us. He 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 agreeing with mo- most of what we said. And uh I would like to give shout out to Big O once again, but I like to give my equation for the Bulls' success this season. Uh when you look at this Chicago Bulls team that started at the top with Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan, you just have to do one thing. You have to change something. 
what you've been doing for the last two, three years has not spurred out good records or good seasons, especially after Lonzo Ball. So change something. Is it your patience? Is it your lineup? Is it your rotation? You need something to change. You got to do something different. Doing the same shit, you look like an idiot. If you keep doing the same shit, it ain't working. <laughs> this is a great point right here. The Bulls don't have one person that's particularly the best at anything, but they have a lot of players on this team that are top 10. When you look at DeMar DeRozan, he's a top 10 small forward. Am I right, nephew? Right. Sound about right. When you look at uh, Zach Levine, he's a top 10, maybe top five shooting guard. Is that right? Yep. If you look at Vooch, this is arguable, but he may be a top 10 center yeah patrick williams is one of the most intriguing players in the national basketball league i would go as far as say he's the top five most intriguing players in the nba as a total kobe white let's just say he come off the bench he'd be one of the top 10 six men of the year easily when you look at the defense, you look at uh, Javon Carter. He might be one of the top five to ten players that you can plug anywhere, and he'll be successful. We got great uh, Torrey Craig, one of the best 3 and D players in the league. And then when you want to talk about the young guys, we got one of the youngest, most athletic players in Julian Phillips, 43-inch vertical arms that stretch like Dawson. When you look at all these, <laughs> when you look at all these best of the league type players, the Bulls obviously got to be a top six seed. Obviously, when you look at it like that. Yeah, I agree with you on a lot of that. But I'm a, I'm I'm going to break it down by looking at when Big O said that the Chicago Bulls got one of the top five best rosters in the Eastern Conference. Let's break it down. For the sake of argument, in no particular order, I believe the nod goes to Boston, Milwaukee, and with the improvements, Cleveland Cavaliers is my top three. After that, anything is arguable. You can argue anything. But I look at the teams, the Brooklyn Nets, I'm not ready to crown them top five. The New York Knicks, I know they solid. Toronto Raptors, eh, eh no. Nah. Detroit Pistons, no. Indiana Pacers, up and not coming. Yet. Not yet. But not yet. So when you look, and and let's not forget about the 76ers. I That's believe about the same, right them, you. <laughs> they in the mix, though. But the problem is, is, bro, they lost George Niang. I believe that was a key piece. You got a guy in James Harden that don't want to be there. You did game players like a Pat Bev. You got Mo Bamba. But... Then on your roster, you got Dwayne Deadman, Montrez Harrell. Eh, yeah. I don't know. Lewis King, Mac McClung, De'Anthony huh? Melton. Decent. So when on paper, when you look at the roster, the Bulls definitely, in my opinion, are at least top five or somewhere in the mix in there. F- roster-wise on paper, just like Big O, and I'm going to go into agreement with that. These guys have to put it together. Billy Donovan has to coach the team. These guys have to figure out who's the de facto number one. My opinion should be Zach Levine. Everybody else, step out, step back, and figure out your way. That's just my opinion. If you got another opinion, if you want to lead, go through DeMar, that's your prerogative. I'm not going to argue that right now. But the point is, is that the Bulls got a lot of issues they need to figure the fuck out. But when we're looking at the paper, We got three all-stars in the starting lineup. We have a Swiss Army knife in Alice Caruso. We got a guy who needs to unlock this shit mentally and Patrick Williams, and we can say, damn, this is a solid young player right here. Once he unlocks it, solid young player right there. You got an up-and-coming Kobe White. You know what I'm saying? You got good pieces around, so... I'm in agreement with the the, the the roster being a top five, bro. Yeah. Um, 
And and you said something interesting, Joe. You said the Bulls had a lot of problems to solve. Uh, but these are solvable problems. These ain't Agreed. problems. These ain't fucking algebra with trig or nothing like that. These are solvable, <laughs> solvable problems, bro. And all it takes is a competent leader. And I'm I'm talking about Billy. And I believe that he can do these things. I think it's ego in a way. What do you say to that? I think it's ego. My shit go work. It worked in the thunder with the thunder. It worked over here with the Florida Gators. It's your work in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls. But things are different with each team and each stop that you go. You must adjust. You must adapt to each team because it's not the same. So do you think he can do these? Could he, could he solve these problems? Is he the man to solve the problems, nephew? Billy. Me personally, he just got to do it. You came in last season, you talking about we're going to run a random offense. Scratch that. It ain't random yeah, no more. That shit was random for sure. Stop being lazy and call sets. No, bro. You know what I'm saying? We seen some efforts, but let's get the players in the right position. Let's use the correct players at the correct time. Why is Andre Drummond in? Not Why isn't Andre Drummond in in points to where you need extra rebounding? Oh or when the opposing team has another big man out there, you're trying to find minutes for Nick Vooch, but you're going to go out here and play small ball. Unacceptable. Let's go ahead and make sure that Nikola Vucevic, if he has it going by continuously giving him touches in the first half, let's ensure that those touches continue in the second half. Let's right. ensure that these guys are running the offense to where the ball is not sticking it and it's not you go, DeMar. No, you go, Zach. Yeah. Or Zach like, yeah, oh, go ahead. Take it. Let's make sure that we coming out with some creativity from the inbound pass. We knew the I'm getting heated again. <laughs> PTSD from last season. Oh, bro. Anybody watching this and you can comment it, send a voicemail, send a text message, whatever. The number is right there. Number. You know the play that Billy Donovan was drawing oh, up yeah. every single time. Out of out of the timeout when it was time to get a bucket for the win. We're going to flare some stuff off right here in this area right here. DeMar DeRozan, you're going to leak out it towards the, the you know, the half court point up the middle. You're going to get the ball. You're going to dribble, 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 and you're going to go get to your spot. Oh, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, don't get me wrong. I will go ahead and say Billy Donovan did give Zach Levine an opportunity, and he blew it. Blew it. Might, we we got to hold him accountable. He blew it. Bad. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Bad. He didn't even shoot the ball. He tried to no. he, he didn't shoot the three. He tried to take a two. <laughs> he tried to take a mid-range. <laughs> we down Talking about he thought back. he got fouled. No, bro. You should have got fouled the at the three-point line if I you thought, thought you were going to get fouled. There. <laughs> so these are all solvable things. Yes. It just has to be a collective. You And I think one of the biggest things is that Billy Donovan is his player's coach. That, that everybody everybody loves him as a players coach, but the X's and O's and what and what you demand that has to you know what I'm saying match that on the court as well. You know what I'm saying? I think that that statement is kind of reptile when people say he's a players coach. I think he likes it his way and he keeps it his way at all time. His player coach a little miscellaneous points at the game. You want to come in, Zach, or you want to go go back in? But when it's time to win the game, it's gonna be his way or the highway. That's what I think. Now, I mean, but just yeah, real ahead. quick, the and and that, and, that, and that's what it came down to. You benched Zach Levine before. I could have called the game to where Demar Derozan should have been benched. Oh, a lot. Oh my goodness. What? Especially in the sec, especially closer to All Star break and after that. Oh. Obviously, you don't want to bench anybody after All Star break if you're trying to make the push. But bro, there was some games he was terrible and need to sit his ass down. Man, DeMar was irrational, bro. DeMar, he was not passing, like, at all. And he was letting everybody know, bro. He's shooting over three, four people. He was – he he should have been benched, bro. That was bad. Yeah, for real. Bro. Hey, so, but uh, he closed – they close, man. Just a, a better decision here, a better decision there. How about you leave Andre Drummond in in the fourth quarter when he was absolutely fantastic in that uh, elimination game in the uh, play-in tournament? Terminate. I know you like Vooch, but man, Andre Drummond, he was getting all boards. The Bulls had a lead in, when they took him out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They had a lead when they took him out. I wish he, you got to make more decisions. Sometimes it ain't always good to go to your go to players. 
And right. somebody in there killing and Kobe killing and let them kill. And you got uh Zach on the bench. You mean you better keep Kobe in there? I don't give a damn. It's the fourth quarter and two minutes. He left. Young, bro. P Will had some games that he was going off early. Yeah. Let me go ahead and ice my own player. What oh, are we he doing? Good. He and in this that. example, real quick, Eric Spostra bench Duncan Robinson. Put him in the game, Duncan Robinson. He driving to the basket, shooting the three, sticking a little yeah, defense. Friend. Hey, that motherfucker is supposed to say, "Oh, come on, you gonna play oh, now?" <laughs> you it's playing. a time and a place, and you as a coach. For, I got coaching experience with football, though. As a coach, when your players got it going, you can't be afraid to let them go. No, even bro. for some, even for you, it depends. You got once they catch that fire and they got that confidence going, let them ride it out until the fire burn out. Bro, these professional players, too. Once one of these guys get hot, bro, it don't matter who in front of them. You just got to ride it, bro. All these guys are the best out of wherever they at, from other suburb, from wherever city. They the best in the world, bro. Let them cook if they cook. And damn, Billy. Shit. <laughs> Facts. But real quick, though, who is you? So I, I I went ahead and said, you know what I'm saying? We kind of tailed off a bit, got the PTSD running and shit. So I, I put the the Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, Cleveland as the de facto top three in the East. You agree to that or you disagree? Uh, the first two, I'm putting Philly at three, nephew. I'm putting Philly at three. Until something happens to James Harden, I'm putting them at three. That's okay. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, we can't beat and be, nephew. That that we not talking about us versus them. We talking about the whole collective on paper. <laughs> on Bro, paper. <laughs> oh, on paper. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We talking about hold on, hold on, on paper. And it's paper. it was no particular order for me. I just wanted to get the de facto three best rosters, in my opinion, out there. And I honestly think if we're talking about the top three. Boston is top heavy and that bench ain't too good. So that's they, will gonna, be that's at, what they will be three for me. That's what I was thinking about, nephew. Like they lost a lot of Grant Williams in them. You know what I'm saying? They, that's you know, what I'm saying. Marcus Smart, Grant Marcus Williams. Smart, now come on now. That's that's gonna hurt a little bit. And you, you know think you relying on Pazinkas old slow, stiff ass. And he be hurt. Uh, and he be hurt a lot, bro. He say he a unicorn. That more like that Bud Light horse. That's all he is. He is not a unicorn. <laughs> but Budweiser, you know Budweiser, Budweiser horse. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, y'all, let us know in the comments below how y'all feeling about the whole thing. Are the Bulls on paper? A top? Do they have a top five roster? We're not talking about what can they do. We're talking about when you just go on ESPN and look the shit up. <laughs> That's all we <laughs> say. That's now, it. <laughs> nephew, you got to start with Cleveland, too. You got to, bro. Bro, they improved. And look, I'm going to believe in Evan Mobley. And they just got the younger brother, Mobley, who was killing in summer league. And summer then league. they got Imani Bates. Then they got George Niang. Then they got Max Struess. It ain't nothing but shooting all around. Are they going to shoot the light out? <laughs> they better <laughs> trade one of them little ass guards. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> they too little. <laughs> he talking about that too little. Give your final thoughts, man. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, this has been a great question. Shout out to man, my man, Big Go. He been showing a lot of support. I ain't been seeing a lot of gang out there with R Dub. I'm calling things out now. R Dub, Teresa, where y'all at? Oh, bro, Teresa, where you at, gang? <laughs> but hey that's it from us today man make sure you hit the like button subscribe here for all your latest bulls content if you want to leave a voicemail be the part of an episode like this hit the number 773-242-9219 and of course see red it's another episode of shy bulls podcast we're gonna catch y'all on the next one for a show Damn. come on yeah, come on, yeah.